Good morning. Guys, it is a gorgeous Saturday morning in South Louisiana. I am headed to what I absolutely love to do best, and that is meet with a potential seller about listing a house and possibly a lot of land, maybe all together, maybe separate, and that's something that we are going to discuss and come up with the best plan. My goal when I meet with potential sellers is to always come up with what's going to be the best plan for their particular situation. So this little old, older lady, her husband passed away a few years. She's living in a large house on a lot of property and she is considering what to do next. Listen, that's always I get this call a lot. I get this call a whole, whole lot. And, and it seems like most of the time it's from women. It seems like most of the time the husband passes away and the woman is then left with a large house on a lot of property and, and doesn't have the means or even the want to, to keep it all up. So I'm on my way to meet with her and come up with the best situation that's going to work for her. And you know, one of the things I always have to consider is when this person, usually they're in their 70s, sometimes they're even in their 80s. Where are you going, right? And they have to know, they have to have a plan. A lot of the times um, they're going to move into a mother-in-law suite, an outdoor kitchen, some space with their children. Um, it may be out of state that they're moving even. A lot of times they'll live in a camper on the property of their children uh, for a while, maybe until something else comes even close by to their house. Sometimes their children are building them a small house on their property for them to live on. So every single situation is different. And so every situation has a different time frame. But the most important thing when you're thinking about selling your home is knowing that I'm going to sell it so you have to have a plan of where you're going next. Be thinking about where am I going next? Wherever the case may be, have a plan because I guarantee you I will sell whatever we have to list. And so these are some things that you can be thinking about before you ever even call me to come and meet with you to sell. And remember, I can list and sell anywhere in Louisiana. I have listed very far away. I don't mind doing it. In fact, I love doing it. And what ends up usually happening most of the time is realtors in your area end up with the buyer. And that's fine. That happens every single day. And that's actually a great situation to be in. Um, but I love listing. I'm great at it. I spend a whole lot of money on the front end, which means I am hiring the best photographer around, the best videographer around videographer around the best marketing team to blast your house out everywhere and so that when it hits the market it is obvious that you took professional pride in getting it ready for professional pictures and videos and so what can you do ahead of time the most important thing to remember is you get one chance to make a first impression and 99 percent of buyers before they ever see it in person are going to see it online that's either going to be on my Facebook page, on my TikTok page, on my Instagram page. Uh, it may be on YouTube. It's probably going to be on Zillow, which is where the majority of people find houses for sale. It's going to be on Realtor.com. It's going to be on Trulia. It's going to be everywhere it can be imagined to be. And 99% of people are going to see it online before they ever decide whether or not they want to go see it in person. So you as the seller have one opportunity to make a good first impression, which means your house, your property, and everything that you have for sale, you want to put your best face forward. So be thinking about when my professional photographer shows up at your house, He's going to have a drone, so he's flying over the house. So what does the yard look like? He is going to take videos, right? 
And then after all of that and it hits the market, when buyers see it online, if they like what they see, they're going to schedule an appointment to go see it in person. So it can't be too clean. It can't be too bright. It can't be too decluttered. It cannot be too neat. It cannot be too neutral, which means it needs to look as little like you as possible because buyers want to be able to picture themselves living in your home. It shouldn't have a smell. So on today like today, on a day like today where the weather's great, it's kind of breezy, open up those windows, get some fresh air in your house, get all the smells out. Listen, one of the worst smells is the smell of an animal. People love their animals, but nobody likes the smell of an animal in a house. I don't care how many animals you have, that smell is gross. And you may be used to the smell in your house, you may not even smell it anymore. So if you don't smell it, I would have somebody that hasn't been to your house in a long time say, listen, I need your honest opinion. Come in, side my house, and tell me if it smells like, what does it smell like? It shouldn't have a smell at all. And don't try to cover it up with some kind of air freshener or a scentsy or anything like that. It needs to be odorless. So open up those windows, have it deep cleaned, and try to make sure it smells like nothing, nothing at all. You don't want it to smell like perfume, Febreze. Listen, Febreze is the worst. You spray Febreze in a house that smells like dog, then it just smells like dirty dog and Febreze. That's all it smells like. It's obvious that you tried to cover it up. So there's no such thing as a house that is too clean, too decluttered, too bright, too well taken care of. First impressions are huge. So when a potential buyer walks through the door and into your house, you want the first impression to be these people took pride in their home and they took amazing care of it. And even if you never did, right? Listen, life gets in the way. We raise kids in our houses. We, we live in our houses and Lots of times we're pigs, right? Because that's how we live. We just live, we're getting by day to day, and most of our houses are not show ready. But when your house is preparing to hit the market, that's a whole different ball game. And when you have little kids, that sucks. It absolutely sucks to keep a house show ready and neat and clean. Listen, I listed a house um, when my kids were about probably um, six and two, and it was literally like keeping house with two damn Tasmanian devils running around, picking up toys, picking up crap, picking up toys, picking up food, all the things. It's not fun. It is not fun. So my goal when I list your house is for it not to sit on the market long so that you don't have to keep it show ready for very long. So hopefully it shows a couple of times, it goes under the goes under contract and then you move it on to inspections. So what you want to be thinking about is fixing all those things that you know are broken so that when an inspector comes along, they don't have all these things to look out at because the little things over and over and over again are going to cause an inspector to be more inquisitive and to look for more things wrong. But when they walk in and they start going through their checklist, if they do not find a whole lot of things wrong, they're not going to be so inclined to dig very deep. It's all about first impressions for buyers, for inspectors, for appraisers. Listen, I'm going on listing. This is probably about, I would say about number 400 um, transaction that I will be dealing with today. And one single wide trailer out of all of those didn't appraise because it's all about first impressions. It's about, first of all, knowing the market, right? And pricing things fairly and knowing that when you price them, they're going to appraise, but it's all about first impressions. You do not get a second chance to make a first impression. So it's huge. So if you're thinking about selling and you have questions, reach out to me. Remember there are no stupid questions. I can help you sell anywhere in the state of Louisiana. I, in fact, I'm on my way right now to Oberlin um, which is probably about an hour away from where I live. It's fine. It's going to be a great day. I'm going to help this lady with whatever she needs, and we're going to get the ball rolling. Um, and listen, for her, it's not going to be easy. 
at an older age when you have a house that you've been living in for 20 30 40 years we have stuff we have lots and lots of stuff so will it be easy absolutely not will it be worth it in the end when she hands over the keys to a new buyer absolutely y'all have a great saturday reach out if there's any way i can help you i'd love to have a conversation with you y'all have a great week and take care